There we go. And letting everyone in. Wait a sec while everyone gets connected to the audio. Whoop. Did Jeffrey drop off? Welcome, everyone. Oh, I think he just turned his video off for a sec. Let's see here. We'll begin in just a moment. We're just waiting. Uh, getting Jeffrey back. I think maybe he turned his video off. But if you haven't joined our paint classes before, um, <clears throat> a couple of reminders that uh, we have. We just keep everyone muted for these classes um, just to help with the flow of them. Um, whoop, looks like Jeffrey popped off. All right, we'll see. We'll work with the possible technical difficulties. Jeff's on the on the road right now delivering painting so he's not at a terribly stable connection but so uh we keep everyone muted and then uh, we record these classes so you can and upload them to youtube so you can watch them back later um and then if you have any questions you can just um let's see here you can just put them into the chat and then uh we'll be watching for those to ask jeff those questions so whoop, there's jeffrey All right, I think you just have to. Sorry about that, you guys. <laughs> no problem. Uh, just had a few technical difficulties, but now I am ready. <laughs> uh, so I can bear, I won't be able to see anybody tonight. Oh, wait, yes, I can. Cool. <laughs> so we're going to paint um, some rocky shores. Uh, and I've been really thinking about how we could do this and really make it simple and make sure that we walk away with a great painting tonight. And if you've taken the classes in the past, you know that I'll uh, have you mix up all of our colors and this creates a, a nice dark, a nearly black color, a dark, dark gray color. And we're gonna use that to our advantage. So if you wanna do that, uh, take, all of the colors except white. Now I'm using um, the primaries, plus I've got Indian yellow and um, cadmium red light. So I got magenta, I have cyan blue, and I have cadmium yellow light. So mixing those all together, you will get a nice dark gray color. If it comes out more red, uh, add more of blue. If it comes out more yellow, uh, green, add more blue. The, the blue is what's really going to bring it to uh, its darkest color. And uh, You may have seen this technique in other painting videos, um, other artists. Uh, it's a nice way to um, kind of shortcut the dark and light. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. If you take your color and basically we want to put a nice uh, thin coat over the whole canvas. like this. So one of the benefits of what we're doing is sometimes it's both of them. So uh, yeah, just cover up your your canvas. Mm 
I'm gonna make a little bit more here. So I don't know if anybody's familiar with uh, Door County, Wisconsin. It's a peninsula just north of Green Bay. And it's a little, it's a wonderful tourist destination. A lot of fun beach towns. And that's where uh, my wife Tracy and I are at this week. We had to run over and drop off some paintings. And it's always fun to visit this area um, just because of the beauty and sight. It's really ideal for uh, plein air painting or outdoor painting. All right, we'll get that whole canvas covered. You don't want it on too thick. You want it on just a, 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 a thin layer. And uh, let me know if you like this technique because um, with this technique, you can do just about anything with it. All right. I'm sure you guys have had enough of me scraping enough to make you go crazy. So I don't know if you have uh, an old rag. This is my wife's uh, fine linen. Um, don't tell her. But uh, uh, if you don't have a, an old rag or an old sock, uh, old t-shirt, uh, something that you can destroy, uh, paper towels will work, but you'll find out that paper towels have a tendency to crumble as you work with them. But they will work. And I believe everybody received a picture of um, the shoreline that we're going to be doing. And actually, Jake, are you able to pull that picture up? Yeah. And, oh, excellent. So we're gonna take a quick look at it. And we're not gonna actually paint this picture. What we're gonna focus on tonight is how to paint the picture. And so uh, after this class, you'll be able to paint this picture with this technique and really get a fantastic painting. So uh, we're gonna just zoom up on the area, focus on, um, right there so this is up in grand marais minnesota and it's artist point if you're familiar with grand marais you know where that is you walk out and you can walk along um, this used to be an island um, but if you look just about a third from the left you'll see that arch and so maybe it was yep exactly right there jake we're going to zoom up on that and what's so fun about this is look at the orange rocks in there. And uh, we can have a lot of fun. We can exaggerate that color a little bit and uh, really make an exciting painting. So one thing that we wanna try to accomplish, we don't wanna necessarily try to just um, paint the painting exactly the way it is. Instead, what we want to do is um, have you know enough detail so that people know that it's a rocky shore, but we want something that's just going to really catch their eye. Something that's going to have um, it's going to take it from a, a painting of a rocky shore to now something that people want to look at or they're excited to look at, or if you want to become a, a an artist where you're selling your art, this is what's gonna sell the art. 
And um, if you've taken the class before, you're, you've heard me talk about um, Ernest Hemingway's shortest story. And he was able to uh, tell a whole story just with six words. And you'll have to Google it to get the whole story. But here's the point. Um, the six words were for sale baby shoes that stop right there. For sale baby shoes. If we just take that context uh, of his story, we, we get a, an idea of the story. For sale baby shoes, There's baby shoes for sale. But the real hook, the real uh, gem that draws us into the story is the last two words, never worn. So for sale baby shoes, never worn. He told a huge novel of a story with those six words. He got our imagination involved in um, uh, creating the, the rest of the story in our mind. And that's what really what we want to do with our painting. So those first four words is kind of like just accurately portraying the painting. Those last two words um, is what draws us in. So what we're going to do at the end is try to find something that's really going to make the painting spectacular. And uh, as I was planning out tonight's class, I couldn't help but think of uh, growing up with Jake and Levi's dad. Uh, we grew up on a farm and my brother Kurt, uh, Jake's dad, uh, was, would trap and I would go out and trap with them. And I always thought it was interesting that uh, Kurt would use just tin foil in the traps and the animal would come along, see the tin foil and snap. You captured, you captured that animal. Well, uh, humans are a lot like that. And I'm not insulting anybody, but we're kind of these, these uh, simple creatures in that same way. We're, we, we're going along and all of a sudden we see something that catches our eye and snap, we get pulled in. Here's, here's an example. There's a bakery in Edina, Minnesota called Patrick's. And if you've been there, you know the desserts that I'm talking about. They're just incredibly beautiful, all kinds of colors, uh, every formation, just beautiful works of art. And sure enough, every time I go in there, I have to order the one that catches my eye. So in a lot of ways, I'm like that animal. Uh, I, I see what I want and snap, I get it. Well, that's what we wanna do with our art. We want it to, when people see our art, we want something to catch their attention, to get interested in it, and snap, we have a sale. <laughs> Thank you for humoring me with that illustration. But there you go. It's those last two words in Hemingway's story. It's the, um, it's the color of frosting on a cupcake that makes us want to buy it. It's something in, in a piece of art that makes us want to buy it. We want to figure out what that is and try to put that, that whatever that sparkle is, into our painting. All right, so enough talk. Let's get started. All right, if you have this, your rig, um, I'm going to hang on to my rig like this using my finger. And again, we're just going to paint a portion of that rock. And that arch is kind of cool just because. Um, uh, in that whole line on that island of Artist Point, those two rocks always stand out to me. And so I always have a lot of fun painting them. So what I'm going to do is just take away my paint. So I'm going to come down like this. I'm gonna take away paint and try to get it as light as I can on those two rocks. Of course, I'm gonna create some rocks around it.
and come down here and this is why we didn't want to put the paint on thick. Now we can get rid of it a little bit quicker. So what we're doing is we're trying to imagine those rocks as we take away paint. So we're just trying to put some shapes on there. Uh, something that's suggesting um, that's going to remind us where those rocks are. And of course, we're going to have some little rocks here. Have a little rock down there. We probably have a few of them down here. There we go. So now we have all of our dark colors in there. And now all we have to do is worry about the light colors. Uh, if you want, you can even kind of uh, go up here where the trees are going to be to do the same thing. Just kind of suggest take away paint from where those uh, branches are going to be. And then really take off some up here because I'm going to put a little sky in it. So if I stand back, oh, I'm getting a little light. The sun's setting here. So I'm going to How's everybody doing? I can see you. I, I forgot that I said it on my iPad. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you want me to. Thumbs up if you're keeping up. Thumbs down if you um, want me to slow down a little bit. Excellent, excellent. So how, what do you think about this technique so far? Is, is it, um, in learning art, I only did things that made sense in my mind. So I know there's all kinds of techniques of take, picking up oil or picking up paint and applying it to a canvas or a surface, but I, I only did things that um, my brain comprehended. And then it made it so much easier for me. And what I'm, I'm hoping to, uh, I'll accomplish with this technique is maybe that it'll, something will make sense in your mind and painting will become that much easier. So there's that's the goal. That's that's what I'm hoping for. All right. So I want these two rocks to. Uh, uh, yes, if you're using acrylic, uh, make sure that you're using a lot of uh, water, and take the rig and um, just keep it. Uh, if you get to it right away with a wet rig, you'll be able to remove the acrylic paint off the canvas, just like oil. So if you're if you have a good imagination, can you look at your canvas at this point and start imagining those rocks on the canvas? 
you really want to start right now we're we're in an abstract stage of the painting but uh we want to be able to see in an abstract way how the painting is being um constructed and so this is just a creating a foundation for us And if, it, if, if you are using acrylic and it's drying faster than you, you hoped, that's okay. Um, you can, uh, basically you can take, if you have a brush or uh, just take, add a little bit of white to your dark color and then go over and paint the colors in or the shapes in. And again, it'll dry fast so then you can just work over that. And so right now, again, we're just creating the framework of the painting, uh, just like a house, uh, they, ha they have plans and they build the frame of the house, nothing pretty, but you get an idea of how that house is going to look. Well, I should probably uh, announce that, uh, you know, all this time you guys have been making fun of how ugly Jake and I, uh, it, we, how ugly we are, but we have a new team member to Buffalo Bowton and he just makes Jake and I look really handsome. And it's Jake's younger brother, Levi. And, uh, um, to a circus even they were appalled <laughs> yeah we warned the women and children don't look at them yeah uh, we, so levi is going to be with us we got jake and levi and and myself yeah <clears throat> all right are we ready oh <laughs> Yeah. You ready to go to the next step? Ready to rock. All right. So now let's go to our lightest light. And what we want to do, we're going to actually get uncomfortable. We're going to grab a little bit of white. And I'm grabbing probably uh, the size of the end of my pinky to give you a visual on that. And then I'm gonna grab uh, just a little bit of my magenta and a little bit of my cadmium yellow light, a way less amount. I just want a very tiny amount uh, affecting my white. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I, I'm, I don't know if you can see that, but it's that white, but it's not white. It's definitely tinted with just a hint of yellow and magenta. And of course that's creating a light orange color. But this is, if I'm looking at it, if I'm being honest, it's, it's light yellow, off white. So now we have our dark colors on our canvas. And now we're going to go to the extreme light. Throw some.
So I use that um, same off white here and I rubbed it in just a little bit to have, uh, I wanted um, that background color to influence my white. It's still white, but now it has a hint of that gray in there. I want all of my focus to be on these two um, rocks. And I might just kind of uh, do that to a few other rocks here, just so they kind of put things in place. Now stand back and make sure you're still in that abstract state of mind, looking at our painting and starting to see the rocks emerge from the canvas. Maybe we, we might have to squint our eyes. If we wear glasses, take your glasses off. We want it to, we want it to be fuzzy. We want it to, uh, remove any details. So we're not focused on any details right now. We're just focused on the shapes and colors. So, so what do you think of this technique? Is this, is this uh, easy to comprehend? Um, you'll see portrait artists uh, uh, paint like this. So they'll paint the, they'll slap all their paint onto the canvas. Um, you can kind of see it dripping down a little bit because they, they fill it up with uh, mineral spirits. And then they just take a, a rag and start removing everything they don't want. And um, pretty soon, by moving that paint around, they can start seeing the, sh the face come out of the paint. And now they know uh, how to begin with it. So that's kind of what we're doing with this. All right, so remember the, that orange that we had in our painting? I'm going to grab just a, a uh, half of a fingernail of, of um, cadmium red light. I'm going to grab a little bit of cadmium uh, yellow light and a little bit of Indian yellow. So I definitely got an orange, but I'm going to tone that down just a little bit with my mud color that I originally created. So I've, I have no texture on my painting yet either. I'm just pushing the paint and pushing the paint into the canvas, allowing the, 
the colors kind of blend together as I do that. And it, it creates a nice natural look. All right, I'm gonna ask a question. We put, we put orange in there. What can we now add to complement, to balance out that orange? Any guesses? Anybody remember? I can't, let's see here. Oh, there it is. Blue. Yes. Excellent. The reason I only ask those questions is because uh, research shows that if we say it out loud as we're learning something, it actually goes deeper into our mind and we retain it longer. All right, so let's add just a little bit of blue. Again, just a, a tiny amount. And if you, at first, it will go green. And if that's the case, just grab a little bit more magenta. I want to get it to a neutral gray. There we go. Yep, so I just, I added a, at first I took my orange color, I added a little blue to it. And because I had mostly yellow in it, I had the cadmium yellow light, and the uh, Indian yellow in there, it immediately went green. So I had to counteract the green and put it in a little bit of red, which is the complement to green. And again, it toned it down quite a bit. All right, so now I got a nice neutral gray. And let's come in here and Still a little green, so I'm gonna add a little more blue. And I'm just scraping the colors on over the previous colors, letting them kind of blend together and uh, let them do all the work as far as making beautiful, uh, their own beautiful colors. How's everybody doing? Is it making sense?
Lena, that was that a little, it's only making a little sense. Um, what part is challenging? Your question might be what everybody else is wondering also. Or what, what's challenging? Let me ask you that. Are there any questions? I'm going to take some of that gray blue and uh, mix it in with the color that I originally started out with. What I did is I kind of, I'm letting this area right here, this is the, the two focal points, or the main focal point of the, the painting. So I'm putting everything else kind of in a lighter tone or even in shadows. So that dark color that I just created, um, I'm using it to kind of uh, start forming, shaping the rocks. So uh, this is where you get to be creative. Um, right now I'm just mixing colors, um, kind of feeling my way through the painting. So I, I mix a color, uh, I try to connect it to the colors that are already on there. So I'll use the color that's already on the canvas, mix a new color with that one, and uh, just keep adding layers, scraping away, uh, and, and forming those shapes. And, and again, I have no texture on my painting right now.
I am trying to go from light, like just looking at this rock right here. I have my lightest color up here and now I'm just slowly going darker as it goes down, darker and cooler. I keep recycling those colors as I create them. Uh, if, if they fit on these two rocks here, I add some. Whatever is still on my uh, palette knife, I'll add it to a different rock. And uh, I don't want the, the pure colors that I'm trying to create here. I want uh, these to have the same colors, but just in the background. They're just supporting our two main pillars here. Remember to stand back. Again, you're, if you can fool your own mind that this is these are rocks, you will be able to fool the viewers of mind or anybody that looks at it in the future. So stand back and uh, make that assessment. Does it look like, um, am I seeing the rocks coming out of the shapes? Has anybody uh, created a color that they absolutely love? Every once in a while, I'll create a color and it's just like being in that pastry shop. I see that, that uh, cupcake with the right color in it, uh, the right texture, and it just looks so um, desirable. That's what I'm trying to do with my colors. Uh, I'm try uh, mixing the colors is really what is kind of going to be those last two words of Hemingway's story. That's what's going to catch people. That's what's going to uh, draw them in is by making these beautiful colors. People love color.
How's everybody doing? Are they looking like rocks? Are they, is it looking like a lake shore? Looks good, Sharon. Looks very good. Oh, excellent, Sarah. Beautiful, I love your rocks. Hey, well, you're, you're just trying to fool yourself you know, fool your own eyes that, um, but follow your, your intuition. So uh, I, I say paint with feeling rather than with, paint with your heart rather than your head. And if you can kind of follow that intuition, that creative side of your, of, of who you are, um, that's the best teacher for getting the painting to look fantastic. If you get a chance, um, pick uh, just a small amount of color, different than your, um, lighter than your background and go in and just throw a little, a little bit of paint in there and then stand back. When you stand back, it should look like rocks you, you because you're i love adding paint and seeing what i can do to trick my own my own mind Of course, maybe I'm e easier to fool. I am the guy that goes into the pastry shop and loves everything. If I was an animal, I would definitely get trapped. Ooh, something shiny. Uh, do I need to move my, um, let me see if I can. Try that.
So I did darken up at the bottom. I made, I remade my mud um, and just uh, darkened up uh, at the bottom of the rocks. And it's not straight across uh, those rock, uh, kind, of, kind of having these different layers allows for the rocks to kind of move forward and backwards, uh, move forward and recede in the painting. Um, but uh, just to give you a quick idea, um, again, I'm going to just take a, a, a little bit of white and tint it. And I tinted it with my mud color. But just to give you a, an idea of how much fun water is. Just by adding that light, um, it instantly uh, fools our mind into knowing that it's water. However, let's try one more trick. I'm gonna grab some of these colors, these light colors right here, and I uh, dragged it straight down. And this is kind of an easy way to do reflections. So with that same white color, So I'll work with it just a little bit more. I'll take some dark and kind of do the same thing. So I dragged the colors down right off the canvas. And then I came back and added just some uh, highlights of, of uh, off-white going to, um, the opposite direction. Instead of going down, now I'm going side to side. And what it does is it creates that illusion of water reflection. So how did everybody do with that? Remember, stand back. Don't, don't make a judgment um, up close. Stand back and see if, I did add a little bit of blue just to um, go along with that suggestion of water. But uh, sometimes when we look at water, it's not always blue. And uh, sometimes we can paint it brown and it's still with those, with the same process, we can paint it brown, create our, our drag down our um, colors, uh, go across, if this is if we have a brown background, go across with our light and instantly our brain knows that it's water.
another little secret with rocks is uh, purposely painting them with mistakes. So just kind of going in there and, and uh, pushing the paint around and letting it stay that way. Those imperfections really mimic the shadings, different shadings of rocks, especially the rocks on uh, Lake Superior. Yeah, so I'm trying to get um, a variety of colors and uh, tones on there. So different shades of gray, but dark and light and medium colored gray, uh, gray colors. And I'm putting it on there in a way that um, is not perfect. I want it that way. And that's really going to suggest those rocks. You can even, um, let's do this. Look at that. Just threw some uh, dark little marks in there. And now all of a sudden I have uh, cracks in the rock. One thing I, I tried not to do, I did do it on this one here, but I, I don't mind it, is I try not to have them go straight across. Right here I have water going straight across, but here I want to kind of make a variety of, of uh, lines just at a slight angle. Oh, I missed that question. All right, so uh, great question. So with the water, take your some colors of the rocks and just drag, come out, leave a nice dark area under, directly underneath the rocks, but then just a little bit below them, just drag straight down and scrape it. And it'll just leave a thin layer of that color, uh, uh, you know, uh, mimicking the, our big rocks here. So after we do that, then we come back and we create um, some straight lines going back and forth. Uh, and that's what's really gonna suggest just tiny little ripples in the water.
All right, I saw another question. Lena, do you want to show your painting? Can we see it? No. This is where Lena shows shows me how it's done. She's professional. Your sister's, is hers turning out pretty good? Oh man, all right. There's the new champion right there. Thank you, Lena, that's beautiful. So how's it, is your water turning out? Are you are you being able to fool your own mind that it looks like water? Don't try too hard, because uh, um, remember it's that power of suggestion. I I made up a, a very light blue, and I'm going to come up here. I'm kind of imagining the tops of my trees. There we go, super random. You want those trees not to be perfect, perfectly lined up. Uh, just kind of create a, a, ra a random pattern. And of course, these are evergreen. So once we have our trees established, um, I'm gonna grab some blue and uh, let's see here, Indian yellow. And I'm creating that evergreen color. Might just throw just a dab of the cadmium red light in there. Yeah, there we go. All right, let's come in here. There we go. Yep. We have another question, Jeff. Uh oh. <laughs> What's the question? Lena asks, would you like to see mine? Can we see hers? You bet. Oh, Lena, that's amazing. I love it. So. So I made up this dark pine green, and this is gonna be the darkest part of the tree. So I'm staying down at the bottom of the trees where the sun isn't necessarily getting down to. And um, as you go up the tree, obviously it's gonna get more and more sun on it. So we'll go lighter and lighter. So uh, just starting out, I'm just gonna come up and, and slowly, uh, Stop adding the dark green in there. And again, um, we don't want to go straight up and down with our uh, with our evergreens. We want to have a slight angle back and forth. So some this way, some this way. Um, you think about the tree on this side of the tree, they're drooping this way. And on this side of the tree, they're drooping um, down this way. 
So again, we're creating the optical illusion of trees here. I'm gonna take some uh, cadmium yellow light, add it to my mixture. So I just lightened it up. And now, I'm going to keep as much dark as I can underneath those trees. So that original color that we coated our canvas with, that's what's underneath there. It's creating this consistent darkness of shadow everywhere where the sun isn't reaching. Someone is asking, how did you make the green? Say that one more time. Uh, we have a question, how did you make the green? The green, uh, blue and yellow. So I started out though with my cyan blue and Indian yellow, which is gonna create a darker um, green, kind of uh, that fine green. And just a, just a tiny amount of cadmium red light. And that's gonna give me that, that natural green that's on pine trees. I'm gonna lighten up my sky just a little bit more. So I added uh, more white to my blue. There we go. So I'm just going to keep creating greens. Um, you know, obviously the base is going to be blue and yellow. Um, I'm going to add at times add a little bit more blue and it's going to bring it towards the teal. This is going to be a cool green. So I'll you again be using that in the shadows. Uh, then I'll take that color and I'll add just a little bit more cadmium yellow light to it. And now I'm going to get a warmer a green. And of course, this is where uh, it'll be more in the sunlight. And those varieties of, of greens, and again, even adding a little bit of red in there, that's going to create these beautiful varieties of natural green.
I added uh, an orange tint. So just a little bit of more yellow, a little bit more of a cadmium red light. And um, I'm taking my oranges that are down here and bringing them up into the trees and just helps with creating that uh, color harmony in the painting. One thing that's really gonna um, sell your painting, make it more realistic, is having some of the, the greenery come over the rocks. As I went up my tree, I wanted to lighten it. So what I did is I took some of my sky color, which has blue in it, which makes up our green, and added that in with the uh, um, green. And so it's just kind of, uh, again, creating that color harmony throughout the painting. It lightens the, the green and uh, helps connect it to the sky because that sky is going to influence um, the color of the green. The atmosphere of that sky is going to influence the color of the green.
I'm now going to go back and uh, take my original dark color to just kind of create some dark shadows in the bottoms of these trees. Yeah, I like that. How's everybody doing? Again, um, it's to uh, my vision of, of that landscape. So I'm not just applying color to hoping something's gonna happen or applying paint hoping something's gonna happen. I'm really, I'm really just focusing on um, the beautiful colors, the contrast, so light and dark, uh, uh, big and small, clean colors, muddy colors, uh, saturated colors, uh, and complementary colors. So I'm kind of a um, just trying to make the painting interesting trying to create that sparkle that's going to catch someone's eye and um, you know uh, so I make a living doing this so I'm trying to create something that is going to catch someone's eye and they're going to want to purchase it so you have that ability to make something interesting in that painting and sometimes it's the happy accidents like Bob Ross uh, always talked about uh, it's those happy accidents that all of a sudden make that painting fantastic. And it doesn't have to be something big. Sometimes it can be just something tiny. And uh, that's what sells the painting. And I'll give you an example. Let's just take a, just a dab of cadmium red light. I have all these colors that dance around these warm and cool oranges. But I'm just gonna take a pure cadmium Cadmium relate, and I'm just going to add it right here. Just a thin little line. Step back. Okay, now that I've done that, I realize I need to do it right here. That's okay. I don't know if you can see how small of amount that I'm, I'm adding, but it's that tiny little subliminal amount that's going to uh, make the, give the painting that sparkle, uh, catch the, the animal and the, get me to buy all the donuts. Tracy will say, what donut do you want? And I'll say those ones, those in that section right there. I think Tracy allows me to eat those things. She only allows me to eat broccoli. So just to give you a little close up here. There's all those colors in there. Remember I said we with that orange and the rock, we can have a little fun with it. 
and it's so subtle, but it seems to add just the right amount of sparkle um, in the painting. You know what, I, I think this needs a little bit of purple. I'm gonna say more lavender. But I want it just in the background. Yeah, I like that. Added just a, a few uh, light colored highlights at the bottom of some of these rocks. Just, we have a little bit of a ripple in our, in our water. So um, uh, that ripple hits those rocks and, it, you know, the creates a tiny little wave, but it reflects the light. So just adding a little bit of um, light colored highlights in there, again, suggesting that idea of, uh, the water hitting the rocks.
I'm going to stop for a minute and just kind of explain uh, some of the things that I did in the painting. Actually, I see one thing. Let's get back to some of this dark. There we go. So um, I mentioned earlier that I'm only focusing on contrast. So uh, or one of the things I was focusing on is contrast. So if you look at the painting, here I have all these oranges, and I do have some orange that goes out into the other rocks, but for the most part, I'm sticking with uh, blues and purples, uh, dark blue grays. So again, um, those colors complement or enhance the two or the orange and the two main rocks. So the orange will go out into the other rocks only to, to create that harmony, but I'm not letting those be as strong a colors as the rocks that are in my two main pillars there. Actually, if I remember right, I think that I'm gonna add some more rocks right here. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot better. So uh, I'm looking um, for those contrasts the light and dark complementary colors, clean colors, dark colors. I'm also looking at the composition. Uh, uh, Hans Hoffman, an uh, artist back in the early 1900s, uh, taught out in San Francisco at Berkeley, and he always talked about the push and pull that needs to happen in a painting. So in the, in the push and pull, I'm directing the viewer's eye through my painting. And a lot of times it's, um, with uh, lines, sometimes it's with colors, it with shapes, but you always want your eye to keep floating around that painting. And this is a good thing to do when you're um, in between painting to step back, look at that painting from about six to eight feet away and make your judgments from that distance. And that is really important um, because that's when um, you're gonna know what it needs what you need to change. Um, if there's an irritation, if your eye keeps going 
gets locked in on an area, keeps going back to it. Uh, any place that's not a focal point that you want it to, to um, bring out. Uh, if there's an irritation, figure out what that irritation is and make a change in it. That's why I brought this stone, this uh, rock right up here higher. It just didn't feel right um, dropping down so quickly into these lower rocks. So I added another rock. It has a little bit of my uh, orange in there. Um, helping it connect with these these uh, other rocks on the shoreline here, but it doesn't pull too too much. It doesn't make my eye go in that direction too much. Um, it allows my focus to stay on these pillars right here. Another area I don't like is this greenery coming into the back of that rock. It seems to be cutting it off. So let's fix that. Oh, yeah, I like that a lot better. There we go. Hopefully this is, it's making sense. You are the creator. So you get to be the one that, de, that uh, makes the judgments of what makes sense. Um, does the light hitting this rock, is it an irritation? Well, then you get rid of it. If it makes sense that that light hitting that rock is perfect, leave it. And so, we kind of are using our imagination to, to picture the scene. We've all looked at uh, how light hits things. If it doesn't feel natural, um, it'll be an irritation to the eye.
Remember your painting does not need to look like mine. It's better that it doesn't uh, because then it'll look good. Um, no, you, you, wanna, you wanna paint this painting um, in your own style. It's all about how you paint. And it's so critical. Uh, that's what makes art great is your style, not somebody else's. So um, you get to be the one that makes those decisions on what's making that sparkle. What's making that painting work? So what are you going, this is a, a rhetorical question. What are you gonna do to your painting to give it that sparkle, that special something? Again, going back to Ernest Hemingway, um, for sale baby shoes, that's a story. That it, it's a, uh, we can stop there and we've told the story. But when we add, uh, never worn that's the that's the um, gem that all of a sudden makes that story interesting so when we're painting uh, we can paint uh, whatever we're painting and stop short of it being special the thing is that's what's gonna really um, make it special that's what's going to really add that sparkle or, or really uh, impress a viewer. Uh, it's what's going to customer buy that painting. So what are some ways that we can add the, that uh, sparkle in our painting? Um, one of the best ways is, again, contrast. Uh, put your lightest light next to your darkest dark, and that um, uh, creates drama in the painting. Uh, it can be just that little hint, that, that little hint of pure color that it, it drives the customers wild because they want more. It's like you're only getting one bite of that cupcake and you're, you, you get the one bite and you're like, oh, I want the rest of the cupcake now. That's what we wanna give to the customers, just enough for them to taste it and want more. Just a little uh, 
psychology. I probably made up most of that, but uh, psychology of attracting, getting sales, uh, getting people to like our paintings, going from um, mediocre to spectacular and, and uh, just making that painting extra, extra special. Uh, this idea of um, using all these grays. So we make all, we take our, our colors, we mix all these grays, and then we have one pure color. And you have all these grays that have this pure color in it and it's supporting it. And now all of a sudden that color is just singing in the painting. All right, I see an area that is an irritation to me. So this, I see this arch come down like this and it goes down to the water. It drives me nuts. So I'm gonna take, and block that. Yes, I like that uh, much better. So observing your painting, um, I, I'm standing, you know, back from my painting, probably maybe four, six, I keep going back four, six, eight feet and looking at my painting and then making decisions of what it needs. And again, I'm looking for those things that irritate my eye and making drastic changes um, to make it better. And uh, uh, in painting in this manner, in this style, in this way, um, it's more about uh, the right feel. So you, you do have to make adjustments in, in the reality of, of what we actually see. Uh, we're pushing colors in, um, in, in this area. We're uh, creating rocks in this area to break up things. So we're, we're, we're creating interest in the painting. Another nice thing about standing back. Another nice thing about standing back is it allows you to get away with that suggesting 
of things. So if you look in there, really it's just placing color and paint in a way that suggests rocks. Come back, I, I uh, hopefully fooled your eye and made it look like it's a rocky shore. So that's why you want to make your judgments from six to eight feet away. The thing that I uh, have to work on is I'll do something and I love it. And so I think, oh, if I, if I love it that much, I'm going to do more of it. And that's when I end up wrecking the painting. So less is more uh, most of the time when you're painting. Going back to the pastry shop. One don't is, is good, so two dozen is really gonna be good? Nope, <laughs> we overdid it. So uh, that's the, just that little hint is gonna be um, better for the painting. I wanted to tone down those rocks because they seem to be fighting with the uh, two pillars.
All right, I think I'm going to stop my painting. Besides a little signature here. To go along with this idea of saying it out loud, uh, let's, uh, I'll see if I can get Jake or Levi um, to allow unmuting, but what are some of some um, things that you learned tonight? Maybe you appreciated uh, something that you want to use in your paintings. And I don't know if Jake and Levi might've went to bed Jake we're here I think people <laughs> people people should allow themselves to unmute now oh sweet okay um Yes, so it's it's that idea of saying it out loud. And uh, matter of fact, say it in the way that you're teaching us. Anything that you appreciated? I like how you brought the highlights up into the upper part of the trees for the sunshine. And then it brought yeah. the colors moving around the canvas by doing that. Cool. Uh, how? So how will you apply that? Now don't just say, um, I'm just going to do the same thing. Why are we doing that? What are some reasons do you, you feel why? Uh, well, to make it, make it more believable, what you're looking at, that the sun would highlight up there and it would be darker down below. Perfect. Perfect. See, uh, like it, when we say, say it out loud, um, again, it, it, it's sounding down deeper into our mind and heart, how we're gonna paint our next painting. And all of a sudden it just hits us and it makes sense. And um, uh, our painting start will improve. Any other thoughts? Nick or Caitlin? Um, I guess for me, what really helped me on this was that blue that you added to the orange, making that contrast. She's the compliment that really made the rock stand out a lot better, even though my rocks aren't all that great. But um, I think that really worked for me. Cool. Thank you for sharing that. So if, if you stand back, my, if you look at my rocks, I guarantee my rocks are, are just as bad or probably worse than yours. But it's that being able to make those judgments from that distance it, and deciding whether it's believable or not. Oh, beautiful, Robin. Look at that. Look at the, how the, that shading how it, uh, what do they call that? Uh, ombre, ombre. Uh, it goes from one color to the next. That's, that's, uh, oh, what's that artist's name? Um, I'll never remember it. I love that, how that looks. You even sense there's some shadows in there behind the pillars. Very cool.
All right, anyone else? Oh, nice, Sarah. Man, that your water is dead on. Look at the glare. Look at how that water looks. Excellent, beautiful, sir. And it isn't. I had trouble with cool. my rocks. Um, I think if you just just create a little more variety in between those two strong colors, so you have a a definite gray and you have a definite orange. Um, maybe make some orange at sort of just a little bit of gray to your orange, so you have a variation, and that's going to create more interest too. Okay. Thanks. That, yeah, it looks awesome. Oh, look at all these. Kai and Ashley and Jocelyn, beautiful. Be <laughs> all right, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to race through everybody's. Sharon, that's incredible. Is it Anya Metz Metzger? Anya? Beautiful. Uh, Gary and Eileen. Everybody, what's cool, look at everybody else's. Look at how different everybody's is. Oh, hi, Ashley. Okay. <laughs> um, look at how different everybody's is. And that's what's cool about art is we all create differently. And that's our strong point. We, we got to keep going with how we create personally. Because... Um, I'm sure you've heard the story a million times. I was trying so hard to be like my friends at school, which made my art even worse. So um, it, it, once I started painting what made sense to me, then it became easier and, and I was able to get it to work in my favor. Were there any other things, comments, or things that you appreciated or learned, or um, again, that saying it out loud is super powerful in how we progress as an artist. Even if you want to, actually, if you don't want to say anything out loud in front of us, say it oh. out loud to yourself. Keep yourself muted and say it out loud to yourself. Say it in a way that you're teaching uh, an imaginary group use us as an example of what you learn. Now you're teaching us what you learn. Uh, jo uh, Jocelyn? I learned that using your sister's old t-shirt works, works way better than a washcloth. <laughs> uh, there's going to be trouble tonight. <laughs> no, she'll forgive me. It'll take a few years, but it'll eventually. <laughs> Just like using Tracy's fine linen. Yeah, so um, matter of fact, if you have paper and pencil, uh, write these notes down. Try to uh, write um, in your painting, try to have as many contrasts as possible. So if, if there's one thing, what's the contrast to it? big, small, light, dark, um, clean colors, pure colors, or muted or saturated colors. All of those contrasts um, push your painting um, to a better, better spot, makes it look better. What is the sparkle? What am I gonna put in that painting that's gonna be, um, is, that's gonna make it extra special? And um, what makes sense in how I finish this painting? Not how you saw uh, me finish or somebody else finish. How are you going to finish this painting and make it, make it, uh, give it that, that sparkle? Remember, it isn't always the big thing. Sometimes it's just a little hint that small little hint that sets it off and fight against that idea of a little is good so a lot is better 
in art, uh, a lot can destroy the painting. All right, so Jake sent out, Jake and Levi sent out some pictures of uh, uh, a much broader uh, spectrum of this scene. If, you if you're able to um, get a larger canvas, sometimes it's easier with this style of painting to work in a little bit bigger than we're comfortable with. Now recreate that whole scene. And again, that, this is Artist Point in Grand Marais. Um, if you've driven out into the parking lot, you can walk out onto Artist Point and it's on in the Bay Area on the left side um, of Artist Point. And you'll see those two rocks. And if you do decide to paint the whole painting, even if you don't, if you can uh, send us your, uh, send us a picture of what you created. Uh, if you use Instagram, um, we love being tagged. You don't have to, but we love being tagged. And uh, if you send us a story, send it, if, if you want, send it in a way that allows us to repost it. And uh, um, we'll put it in our stories. Anything else, Jake or Levi? Um, here, no, I can't. I can't really think of much else other than uh, Instagram is usually the best way for us to see it, and then also it's probably the best way for other people to see it as well. If you uh, if you tag us, then we can put it mentioned in our story or or whatever else. So um, nothing other other than that. Cool. All right, so uh, like I said, Trace and I are over in Door County. Um, we were gonna head up to the um, Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Um, and so we're not sure if we'll be back by next Monday or if we'll have service. We're hoping to do a class, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, we'll keep you everybody posted on that, but uh, we love, seeing as many people as possible on the classes please come please keep coming back uh, the idea is the more you paint the better you're going to get and uh, even though you're, you're not you might not want to paint like i paint there will be something that you can benefit from and uh and that's really the whole goal of this <laughs> <laughs> nothing we so will far, but yes yeah. nothing nothing currently set in stone but you never know and now that oh so we i most of you know we kind of got a sucker punch to the gut a few months ago and so we're just kind of getting back to our schedule and life and um so we'll get all those things uh up and running again soon but thank you for your patience and support yeah. oh thanks nick and caitlin uh, hey if you guys ever get a chance if you guys are looking for a road trip uh if you live in minnesota and you've, you've only been to the west side of lake superior it's cold, rocky, deep, dangerous. If you go to the east side of Lake Superior, it's like Hawaii. And people, have, that's how people describe it. Beautiful, uh, perfect sand beaches. It's shallow water. The sand, go, you can walk out for blocks into the water. And uh, it's absolutely beautiful. Caribbean color water. So uh, the exact yeah. opposite of the west side of Lake Superior. And uh, Pitchard Rocks uh, State Park, might be a national park, is there also lots of waterfalls, 
Uh, you can take boat tours around these um, rocks that have just amazing colors. I'm, the colors that I did in my painting tonight, uh, you look at these rocks and that's really the colors that, that are in these rocks. So it's, it's just crazy beautiful. Yeah. All right, if there's nothing else, thank you everybody. And uh, we will see everybody again soon. Thank you. Have thank a good you, night. Everyone. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Bye.